In this exciting video, we're going to learn how to fix a bug in a JavaScript game. The game that we're going to debug is Snake. I released Snake about a year ago and there's a tiny little bug. If you're interested in learning how to make Snake, check out my full tutorial which I'll link in the description. The bug that we're going to fix is the following. Snake movement is controlled by our arrow keys. As you can see, we can change the direction of our snake. However, if we touch the arrow keys a little too quickly, we can bypass a check that says you're not allowed to go into your own snake body. As you can see, we had a little bit of trouble reproducing it, but here we are. We can see that we've crashed. Now, our snake originally was moving right, but then all of a sudden we crashed into our snake body going left. So this is not supposed to happen. You're not allowed to move back into your own snake body. You can crash into your own body, but you can't move back. So let's go ahead and and fix this bug. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. Let's get started. What I've done so far is open up the application in Visual Studio Code. We also have our browser here on the right so that we can easily run the application and look at the console for any output. Let's go ahead and do a quick little recap of our game and how it works. We're just going to cover the game loop and keyboard input. The game loop is what drives our entire game. The game loop is responsible for drawing to the screen. So with our snake game right now, it's sitting still, but it's continuously redrawing this screen over here. Normally for your game loop, you'd use something called request animation frame, which would get you the next animation frame to draw, or you could use set interval and just say a thousand divided by 60, which would draw the screen 60 times every one second, which matches most typical monitors these days. The way that we did sneak over here was a little bit unique. We used set timeout, which will call a function after a certain period of time. And the way we did this is we gave it the draw game method, and then we did a thousand divided by speed. The reason that we used this speed variable was so that we can control how fast the game was running. So as the snake body got longer, we wanted the game to become more difficult, so we would draw the game quicker. The next part of the game that we'll recap is the keyboard input. If we scroll to the bottom of our application over here, we can see that we add an event listener for key down, and then we listen for particular keys. We're listening for the arrow keys, so we're listening for up, down, left, right, and we also added the WASD keys, the WASD that you typically use in most games. Once a key is pushed, we then determine whether or not you're changing the X velocity or the Y velocity. So you'll notice these two variables that we have, input Y velocity and input X velocity. The up and down are going to control our Y axis, and the left and right are going to control our X axis. Now you can only move in one of those directions. If we push up, and we change our input velocity to negative one, well, then we're going to set the x velocity to zero because we don't want you to move on a diagonal. Now, we only have two variables, input x and input y, and yet we can move in four different directions. The way this is controlled is the value can either be a negative one, a zero, which means you're not moving, or a positive. So let's take a look at the x. Now, looking at our canvas over here, the way things get drawn is they start in the corner over here at 0, 0. As we move to the right, the number will increase. So if we're moving our snake starting from over here, we're going to use a positive number. So that's why we do plus 1, and plus 1 will make our snake continuously move along the grid. If we want our snake to move backwards, we go minus 1. So over here we'd go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then going this way, we'd go, well, minus 1. So we go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's just decreasing that value as you move in the direction. Same thing for up and down. So since zero, zero is over here, well, y is going to increase this direction. So in the down direction, y is gonna go plus one. So if we look at down over here, you can see that input y velocity is equal to plus one. And if we look at the up, because when we're moving this way, it's gonna go negative, you're gonna see that it'll be negative one over here. And then within the keyboard input over here, we've done one more thing. We've done a boundary check. So you can see for every single one of these, up, down, left, right, there's always this if statement over here that says, check some particular value, and if it's true, return. So what is that doing? Over here, let's take a look at the up key. So if I'm currently moving in the down direction, that means my input y velocity is going to be positive. So let's refresh the game over here. I'm going to hit down, and I'm also hitting up, and you can see I, I never went up. The reason I never went up was because of this check. So as soon as we got over here, it stopped and checked. And let's illustrate this even better. Let's open up the code over here. I'm opening up the console, and I'm opening up index.js, and then from that file, I'm going to go ahead and put a little 
breakpoint. So let's expand this screen over here, then expand this over here. Now we're going to go into our code. You may never have done this before, but this is kind of cool and it'll show exactly what's happening. Now we're going to do is I'm going to put a little breakpoint over here inside our code. Let's also make this just a tad bigger by collapsing a bit of this. Now we're going to run our game. Now I'm going to hit down. Now I'm going to hit up and our code will stop. So when our code stops over here, we can see that our input Y velocity is one. So when it's one, it means we're moving downwards. So what this check is doing is I wanted to move up. I pushed the up key. Now it's not going to let me move up. It's just going to do a return. As soon as it sees input velocity is equal to one, it's like, nope, you're not allowed to move in that direction. You're going to crash into your own snake body. And that is not allowed. Now we do that check for every single one of these. Yet for some reason, our application crashes. So let's dig a little bit more into that. Let's do that by adding some console logging. In my Chrome browser over here, I have my developer tools open and I have the console tab selected. Then inside my key down event over here, we're going to log some additional information. We're going to go ahead and log what the inputs X and Y values are. The other thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to remove the keyboard listener when it's game over. So go ahead and copy our keyboard listener over here. Go up to our game loop. And then inside of our game loop, once we have a game over, we'll go ahead and remove the keyboard listener so we stop taking keyboard input. So over here, we'll just change this to remove event listener and we're going to remove it. One more piece of information I'm going to add is just inside our game loop over here on the draw game. I'm going to add a console.log and we're going to call this end. This will be the last value that the draw game is aware of. Now we can go ahead and make our game crash. We can go ahead and use the information here to understand what's happening. Now, the first value is the X value and the second value is the Y value velocity. So taking a look at this, it looks like our snake was moving left. So that's going to be the X. So the first number. So this negative one over here probably really represents the direction that we we're moving in. Then all of a sudden over here, we can see that the value for our Y was changed to negative one. So that's okay. So that means that our snake should have been moving up because negative one is up on the Y. But then all of a sudden there's a one on the X and the one on the X is going to go right. So this is why the yellow over here goes into the green. We can see that all of a sudden the Y position was changed. So our check in our keyboard listener over here is failing. So let's go take a look at the left and right movement that we have. Now right movement says if the input X velocity is negative one, which is what it was over here, then you're not allowed to go right into your own snake body. But it was reset all of a sudden over here. Over here, all of a sudden, negative one, Y was negative one, which means that the X velocity became zero. So when we got to this check, all of a sudden this check was like, hey, no problem. Apparently you're moving uh, in the up direction. So it's okay to go right. And that's not the truth because our snake body is actually on the other side of us and we were going left. So let's go ahead and resolve this problem. This bug is happening as a disconnect between taking keyboard input and drawing our game loop. So let's go ahead and make this modification where we remove these checks from our keyboard input and move them into our game loop. Let's go ahead and start by doing the following. So in each one of these methods over here, we're just going to delete that little if statement. So we'll delete that line over there as well. Then we're going to go ahead and try our game out. Let's see what happens. So we're going to move and then I'm going to move right and then I'm going to move left. And the game crashes automatically because we don't have these checks anymore. And I can do the same thing for the up and down. No matter what direction we go, if we try going in the opposite direction, we're going to get a crash and we're going to use this this information in order to fix the bug in the game loop. Let's go scroll to our game loop and then just above our game loop we're going to define two variables that we're going to be using. We're going to have a previous x velocity and a previous y velocity that we're going to be tracking. Let's start with our right direction. If I move right and push left, we get a game over because we crash into our own body. So we're going to add a little if statement over here. We're going to say if our previous x velocity is equal to one, which means that we're currently moving in the right direction, then we should not be allowed to go left, which is negative one. So we take our x velocity, which is the new direction that we want to go in. And we say, are you trying to go left right now? If you are trying to go left, then say that the x velocity is equal to the previous velocity. So we changed it to say that it was left. And then we said, whoa, wait a minute, that's going to cause an error. So change it back to moving to the right direction. So now 
we try that, it's not going to quite work yet because we need to set our previous velocity. And we're going to say our previous velocity is equal to x velocity over here. Save it. Now, when we move, we don't crash anymore if I hit the left key when we're moving right. Now that we've made the change for the right direction, we can go ahead and make the same change, but for the left direction. So we're just going to copy what we got over there, paste it in. Now we're saying if your previous x velocity was negative one, which means that you're moving left and you try and go the right direction. Well, that's not allowed. What we do then is we set your x velocity back to your previous velocity, which means that you'll continue to move left. So let's go ahead and save that try it out and it's working I'm pushing right and all we did was crash into the wall we did not crash into our own body before we continue let's go ahead and update these comments just so they reflect better what's happening we'll say was moving right and try to move left then I'll go ahead and update this one as well so we'll say was moving left and try to move right then we can go ahead and implement what happens when you go up and down. So what we can do is we can go ahead and just copy, I'll just copy one of these actually, and then I'll paste that down below. And we're going to do is we're going to say was moving up and we try to move down. What we're going to do is change our variable over here. So this says y velocity. Our previous y velocity is negative 1, which means we're moving up. And then our x velocity or will change to y velocity. So we try and switch that to 1, which means we'll be moving down. Then we just need to make a change over here as well and change this here. One last thing we need to do over here is we need to set our previous y velocity equal to y velocity and save that. Now we can try moving up and push down and you can see that it's no longer crashing. The next thing we'll handle is going down and pushing up. For moving down, all you have to do is just do the inverse. Just copy this one over here. We'll paste it. We'll say was moving down and you try to move up. So moving down means the number is positive for our velocity and you try and move in the opposite direction which is negative one, which will be moving up. Then we're going to set our y velocity to the previous y velocity, which means that our direction will not change. So then we can go ahead and test that out. I'm gonna go ahead and push down and push up. And you can see that our snake is no longer crashing into its own body. Now we can give the game a little bit of a bigger test. And you can see I can push my keys here and I'm smashing a bunch of them at a time, trying to get it to smash into its own body, but it doesn't seem to be possible. We can go ahead and do the same test over here, but let's just eat a couple of apples and we get that nice gulp sound. And then I'm trying to crash into myself and I can crash into myself, but I crashed into a different part of my body. We can even illustrate that better by eating a whole bunch of apples. Basically what we're trying to prevent is crashing into yourself directly behind yourself, which is not possible, but you are allowed to go ahead and just crash into your body. So we'll just loop around and there you go. You can see my head was hitting to the tail, which caused the game over. With this bug fix, we've gone ahead and improved our game. No longer can you accidentally crash into yourself by going in the opposite direction. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share.